morning, Maria Regina, and happy December. We made it to the last month in 2020. While this year hasn't been what many of us thought it would be, it's still the most wonderful time of the year. This past Sunday, the season of Advent began, and before we know it, Christmas will be here too. Since we are in the season of Advent, we thought we would begin each Friday with a special Advent prayer service as we prepare and wait for the coming of Jesus. So let's send it over to Harrison as he leads us in this week's prayer. Harrison? Thank you, Sam. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Advent season began this past Sunday, November 29th. What is Advent? Advent means coming in Latin. Advent is the four week Christian spend waiting and preparing for the birth of Christ. The use of the wreath and candles during Advent began in the Middle Ages as part of the spiritual preparation for Christmas. The wreath and candles are full of symbolism and have a special meaning. The green wreath signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath has no beginning or no end, symbolizing the eternity of God. The first purple candle is the prophecy or candle of hope. It is in the remembrance of the prophets, especially Isaiah, who foretold the birth of Christ, reminding us of the anticipation of the coming Messiah. As we light this first candle of Advent, we are waiting for the coming of, our, of your Son, Jesus, into our hearts and in, in, in our lives this Advent. Help us to always follow him as the light of the world. Let us go rejoice in, to the house of the Lord. A reading from Romans 15, 13. May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace by means of your faith in him, so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. The response is, Come, Lord Jesus. It is winter time, days are short, and nights are long. We need the daylight of Christ. We need the warmth of and joy of Christ. And so we gather around this wreath of hope. Come, Lord Jesus. Let the circle of this wreath remind us of the coming of Jesus, whose love for us has no end. And so we gather around this wreath of love. Come, Lord Jesus. The light of the Advent candles will remind us of the coming of Christ, who is the light of the world. And so we gather around this wreath of light. Come, Lord Jesus. The green color of these branches will remind us of the coming of Christ, who brings eternal life. So we gather around this wreath of life. Come, Lord Jesus. Dear Jesus, it is the season of Advent, and we are full of hope. We are getting ready in our hearts and get, and in our lives to celebrate your birthday at Christmas. Help us live in your love and share with that love with others in your name during this holy season. May we remember that this time should be as we wait in full joy, joyful hope. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Harrison. That was absolutely beautiful. It's reasons like this that I love being able to attend a Catholic school. Now please stand and join Evenden in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. Great job, Evenden, and welcome to our team. Let's head over to Emma in Together, in Together We Shine Studio as she shares which class got the spotlight this week. Emma? Thank you, Sam. This week, I'm so happy to be announcing the spotlight. So dim the lights and envelope, please. This week, we are shining our spotlight on the seventh grade. My fellow classmates and I have been studying, have been hard work at studying the literature of Cyrano de Bergerac. Let's join our special guest correspondent, Juliana, as she shares the fine artistic and literary creations of the seventh grade. Juliana? The seventh grade read Cyrano de Bergerac and explored many aspects of the play, such as themes, character interactions, and discovering the inner conflicts of the main character, Cyrano. To illustrate some of these aspects, we did a keyhole project. Using illustrations, quotes, and thematic words, 
Each student pre pre presented a keyhole view of the play. Miss Prisco was extremely proud and impressed with the results. Look through the keyholes and see if you can glimpse a feature of the play. Thank you, Juliana, and thank you, Miss Prisco. I had so much fun with this project. I personally love art, and I was great to be able to combine my artistic talents with my other c content eras. Thank you for allowing me to be part of such a wonderful showcase. Sam? Thank you, Emma, and great job to the seventh grade of Mrs. Prisco. Those projects came out amazing. Speaking of Miss Prisco, why don't we join her to see what the new MR word of the week is, Mrs. Prisco? Good morning. The word of the week is gregarious. Let's see if gregarious describes you. This word was used in the 17th century, derived from the Latin meaning flock or herd. By the 18th century, the word was being used to describe human beings as well. We can connect gregarious to the theme of community as we are all together in a group. And if you are kind, giving, and seek true friendship, you are definitely a gregarious person. So let's use our vocabulary words so far. Community, parochial, and gregarious in a sentence. Our gregarious students of Maria Regina School love being together and sharing experiences in our MR parochial community. That's our word. Now can you think of ways that you can be gregarious this week, especially during the season of Advent. Thank you, Mrs. Prisco, and thank you to my fellow student council members and Mr. Mascola. Together, we are working on a new project. Every few weeks, you will see a new word appear above the recess doors. These words will probably relate to the word of the week. They, like the word community, which is already there, will show character traits that MR st students should and do portray. As we have learned from Mrs. Prisco, we are a part of the parochial school community that comes together each day, academically, spiritually, and of course, gregariously. And let's give a big shout out to Mrs. Bronson for painting the word community for us. Speaking of Ms. Bronson, I wonder where she's flying this week. Why wait to find out, Ms. Bronson? Where in the world are you today? Where in the world is Mrs. Bronson going today? Hey kids, it's the most magical time of the year and I am loving every minute of it. So, I decided over the next three weeks we're going to be celebrating the holiday spirit by traveling around the world to see how others celebrate Advent and Christmas. So, let's get sledding. Clue number one, I'm flying east across the Atlantic Ocean to this European country next to Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, and Russia. Clue number two. This country was the birthplace to some pretty famous people, including scientist and mathematician Nicholas Copernicus, Marie Curie, and Pope John Paul II. Clue number three. This country's most recognized dish around the world is a pierogi, a dumpling filled with meat, cheese, and mushrooms, or fruits like blueberries and strawberries. Mmm. Do you know where I am? That's right. I'm in Poland. Since we just started the season of Advent, I thought it would be a good idea to visit a country that makes a pretty big deal about Advent. During Advent, people in Poland have many special traditions. One special tradition focuses on celebrating when Mary received the good news from the angel Gabriel that she would give birth to a son and call him Jesus. To celebrate this tradition, called the Rorati, Christians attend a special mass held at dawn. Another popular Advent custom in Poland, like in many other countries, is to have an Advent calendar. 
But to make them more personal, many children and families make their own handmade calendars. Pretty cool. Poland is filled with many Christmas traditions as well. On Christmas Eve, or Vigenia, families gather together for Kalakda Vinija, or Christmas Eve supper. This is a pretty big deal since they are supposed to fast all day long. That's right. You heard me. They can't eat until the first star appears in the night sky. Picture it. A large table filled with 12. That's right, 12 different traditional dishes. That includes barsh, which is beetroot soup, carp, a type of fish, bigos, a dish with cabbage and dried plums, and so much more. I think I'd be stuffed. Scratch that, I know I'd be stuffed from all this food, especially after not eating all day. You may wonder why 12 dishes and why do they appear to be meatless? Well, Interesting you ask, there are 12 meals to represent the 12 apostles and they usually skip the meat as a way to honor the animals who took care of baby Jesus in the manger. In fact, many of the traditions that the Polish do for Christmas have a bigger meaning. They also tend to put straw under the tablecloth to remind themselves that Jesus was born in a stable. Another special Christmas tradition was the eating of the opatek, a thin wafer-like cookie. The water usually has an image of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus on it. Each member of the family, starting with the eldest, break off a piece of Opatek. As they pass the wafer around the table, each member gets blessed to show their love for one another. Other traditions on Christmas Eve include singing Christmas carols and decorating the Christmas tree. Fun fact! Did you know that some Polish families decorate their Christmas trees with an artificial spider's web? That's right. Legend has it that, the con that countries like Poland, Germany, and Ukraine on Christmas Eve night Spiders cover the trees in cobwebs. Then, on Christmas morning, those webs magically turn into silver and gold strands. Some even say that Sveti Mikolai, or Santa Claus, magically turns the spider webs into tinsel. Who knew? Polish Christmas trees are always decorated with a star on top to represent the Star of Bethlehem, gingerbread lights, and bomki, which are baubles and glass ornaments in different shapes. In fact, I think I heard someone mention that they sell these at the Krakow Christmas Market. Hmm, I still need to finish some Christmas shopping. On my way to the Christmas Market! The Christmas Market in Krakow is located in the Old Town Square of the city. It is absolutely beautiful, especially with all of the twinkling lights. As I walked through, I was able to see their beautiful nativity displays, including the Krakow Nativity Cribs Exhibition, also known as their Christmas Crash Contest. Their artwork was breathtaking. And as I mentioned before, I was able to shop. The market is filled with gorgeous handmade glass, pottery, wood carvings, and baubles. While at the market, I heard some of the locals talking about food. I knew I couldn't come to Poland without trying their famous pierogies. So before heading back to Maria Regina, I need to find me some. Hmm. I'll see you back at MR soon. Back to Sam. A spider? I think I've heard everything now. Burr, did anyone else feel that cold gust of wind? I wonder what this, weekend, this weather this weekend will be like. Colton, why is it so cold? Do you think the snow is in the forecast? No snow this weekend, Sam. The cold snap we had earlier this week has actually subsided a bit and you may feel that it's a bit warmer outside at recess later on today. By the way, did you know that we're officially in winter? Meteorologically speaking, that's it. Colton, what are you talking about? Everyone knows that winter starts on December 21st. Yes, but that's the astronomical winter. Meteorological winter is from d December 1st through February 28th. Keeping those consistent days help meteorologists such as myself with climate forecasting and weather trends. Fascinating stuff if you ask me. Well, it certainly does feel like winter. What can we expect this weekend? Well, t today will not be too bad. Although we can expect mostly cloudy skies, temperatures will re reach up to 53 degrees. Lows tonight will be around 48 with the chances of showers throughout the night. Tomorrow is going to be a washout with rain at heavy times. Temperatures will once again reach 50-30 degrees, but I doubt it will feel that warm with the lack of sunshine. Rain will continue into Saturday night as temperatures dip down to 38 degrees. 
The rain should finally clear out by Sunday afternoon, but the clouds will linger as the high will only reach 43 degrees and the lows Sunday night will dip to way down below freezing. Yikes, stay warm, my friends. Back to Sam in the Faith Forward studio. Thank you, Colton. And now let's head to our royal announcements of the week. Gina? Well, Sam, we have a few announcements this week. For starters, the Student Council would like to thank everyone who so generously donated food and money last week for our food drive and dress down. The Maria Regina Parish Outreach is very grateful for your generosity this holiday season. Please make sure to tell your parents to check their emails for information regarding some MRPA events going on. There is a gingerbread decorating contest, a Christmas light competition, and tomorrow they are hosting a socially distanced Santa workshop for all the kids. For more information, please email mrpa at mariareginaschool.org. Student Council will be sponsoring some Christmassy related events of our own. More information will be following in the coming week. Don't forget to vote daily for Maria Regina in the Best of Long Island contest. Best Catholic school, best nursery school, and best private school. Voting closes on December 15th. And lastly, congratulations to our eighth graders who are receiving their rings today. Happy ring day, Sam. Thanks, Gina. Well, I think about that does it for today. Remember, as long as we have hope, we have direction, the energy to move, and the map to move by. On behalf of us all at the Good Morning Maria Regina, we hope you an awesome Friday and a blessed weekend. Hear the angels sing, there's hope for everyone. To announce our King, there's hope for everyone. What good news they bring, there's hope for everyone. Angels sing, there's hope for everyone. They came from our there's hope for everyone. Wise men saw the star. There's hope for everyone. Shepherds heard the choir. There's hope for everyone. From afar, there's hope for everyone. We are waiting on the promise for the the darkness bending low to be among us bring your glory in the highest Jesus come let us